Uh, yeah, th- I watched a lot of this game, you know, full transparency for fantasy football reasons. <laughs> I watched right to the end. How pathetic am I? Uh, but yeah, the uh, the Texans dominated the Cowboys 34 to 10. The, the Cowboys are, are not a good football team, but they're really not good when their offensive linemen get hurt, apparently, because they just lost Zach Martin and a bunch of other linemen in this game. Their offense could do nothing. Uh, Cooper Rush had a tough time, too. By the way, the Texans, honestly, if you watch this game, I mean, this was really not an indicative of the score, 34-10. to 10. They didn't play all that well either. But right now, Dallas is borderline worst team in the NFL, truthfully, from watching this game. I got to believe that. Meanwhile, on the Houston Texans side, they're charging toward the playoffs, it would appear at this point. Uh, D'Amico Ryan said the frustration of not scoring in this game for uh, game after game, by the way, took its toll, but they finally picked up some points. It started, the run game starts with our offensive line. I asked them to challenge them to play fast, play aggressive, thought they did a really nice job. And Joe, you know, when he's, when he's on, uh, he's, a, he's a force for us. Uh, over 100 yards, three touchdowns, just really – like the way we just kept turning it in the run game and proud of the guys for stepping up to the challenge. Can you talk about the defense, just the takeaways and just the pressure you guys had all night? The defense played with the elite energy, and we executed really well. You know, all for like one big play that we gave up. I'd like to have that one back, but overall, uh, I think our guys played really well to attack the football the way we attacked the football. D-line really picked up the pressure in the second half. Uh, Derek Barnett, the play he made really changed the game for us, right? It flipped the momentum. It got everybody juiced up on the sideline. It was just a huge play. Him get the strip sack and for Petrie to come up and force the ball out. Like when something we talk about and we harp on is attacking the football. And we talked about this week, not just attacking it, going to score. So that was a huge play for us defensively. I thought the D-line really played well in the second half and Stingley, you know, really great job in coverage all game um, for him to get the pick. That was big time for us as well. Another huge game for Joe Mixon, by the way, is who he was referring to in the running game early on in that clip. All right, now let's get to the Cowboys side of things where, I mean, honestly, it looks like the end is coming for head coach Mike McCarthy. Another very disappointing loss for them in a game that was not particularly close. McCarthy said disappointing on every level. Explain yeah, it. Think, yeah, yeah. I think any kind um, of. I think I think the reality. It's uh, it's very frustrating. It's uh, frustrating for everybody. Uh, frustrating for the players. Uh, frustrating for the coaches. I know it's uh, you know it's disappointing for the fans. Uh, but we just we 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 have a lot of moving parts going on, and we just have to be cleaner and more detailed in certain spots. We're we're we're, we're not playing well enough, or you know, execute well enough, um, coaching well enough to overcome some of the mistakes we're making at, at, at critical times in the game. Uh, so, you know, just go, even in the first half, you know, we, we had some opportunities there um, to, get, to get some more points and, and didn't get it done. We, ju- we just have to play cleaner in these tight spots, and uh, we did not do that tonight. The youth of your team, obviously you had to play a lot of guys tonight. Without looking at the film, are you just like, these are the people I have, I got to play them a little bit more now? No, I'm playing. I'm playing who we have to win the game. I mean, that's just you know, ever who's healthy. Um, you know, it's just you know, we had a long week of practice, but we you know we had we had a number of guys that didn't make it. So you know, these guys practice. Uh, we're we're playing we're playing the best players to, to to win the game. So I really think right now, uh, Cowboys need a mental breather. They're not going to get one. Still, a lot of tough games, including Thanksgiving Day, folks. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you. Next week, Cowboys and Giants. All right, let's get to a serious story here. The Tampa Bay Rays are still trying to get a new stadium built. They really have nowhere to play next season. They're going to play uh, at Steinbrenner Field, uh, Yankees facility, and it's just boiling over with a lot of the fans, especially with this latest piece of news that the Rays are still having trouble securing funding for a new stadium site. In fact, there was a teenager was reported by the Tampa Bay Times that lived uh, close to the uh, new stadium site potentially. And uh, he was charged with one count of written threats to kill this teenager. Crazy story here. Quote, I live five minutes from him. I'm going to go to his house, blow his head off with my short barreled. Read this post on X. This teen was arrested for saying this. I mean, obviously, this is going way too far. But needless to say, uh, the Rays are going to have a hard time staying in the Tampa Bay area if they don't get a stadium done soon. 
Uh, as a side note, of course, they still have to clean up Tropicana Field as well. All right, let's get to better news. The Golden Knights and BetMGM have extended their partnership. Sports betting and iGaming operator BetMGM announces yesterday they have a partnership with the Golden Knights through the 2026-27 season. As part of the agreement, BetMGM will continue as the official betting partner of the Golden Knights on the Nitron throughout T-Mobile Arena and with all branded content as well. All right, in case you missed it last night, even before the game began between the Cowboys and Texans, things were falling apart, literally. At Cowboys Stadium, AT&T, a piece of metal actually fell through the stadium. Nobody was hurt, but they decided to close the roof after that. Good idea. Brock Purdy popped up on the injury report for the San Francisco 49ers. He uh, basically had a left hip and oblique injury, some pain and soreness. We'll see if he ends up playing this week. The Bears have filed a complaint with the NFL that the Packers committed a penalty on that game-ending field goal block. Head coach of the Bears, Matt Eberflus, told reporters the Bears believe the Packers tried to block illegally at the end of the game. The long snapper is considered a defenseless player at the time of the snap is afforded extra protection. Because of those rules, defenders can't forcibly hit the defensive player. Apparently they did. They did not call a penalty. Nothing is going to change. The Bears still lost that game. All right, folks, a lot of firings in college football, in case you have missed it, over the last 24 hours. Remember Tom Herman, the toast of town at the University of Texas? He then went to Florida Athletic University, Atlantic University, excuse me, FAU, and then they ended up getting fired. Two seasons, 6-16, six and 0-6 oh in the AAC this year. FAU has lost five games in a row. Also, Charlotte has fired their head coach, Biff Poggy. Tim Brewster is now the interim coach. UMass has also fired their coach, Don Brown, after a 6-28 and 28 stint. You read that right. 6-28. and 28. I don't know who keeps their job after that. Also, the quarterback of the Iowa Hawkeyes, Brendan Sullivan, likely out for the rest of the regular season. All right, we got college football again tonight. It's a Tuesday night, so what would it be without some action? The Akron Zips, 10-and-a-half road favorites at Kent State, total of 48-and-a-half. So it's Central Michigan, <laughs> six and a half point home underdogs against Western Michigan. Total is 56. Northern Illinois, two and a half point road underdogs at Miami, Ohio, with a total of 42 and a half. In the NBA last night, big shot Damian Lillard ends up getting a big victory, and they needed it. Did the Milwaukee Bucks? They end up beating the Houston Rockets. Final 101 to 100. Dame had 18 points and 10 rebounds. The Philadelphia 76ers just keep on struggling. 2-11 and 11 on the season, 106-89 to 89 loss to Miami. And folks, they were outscored 79-43 to 43 over the last 30 minutes of the game. Golden State falls to the Clippers, 102-99. to 99. The Magic go into Phoenix, cover the 4.5-point spread, and beat the Suns, 109-99. to 99. But the big story, of course, tonight in the NBA is the Boston Celtics have a chance to knock off the undefeated Cleveland Cavaliers, they haven't lost yet this season, folks, and the Celtics are four-and-a-half-point favorites. 